we are sure you must have heard about the world-famous Voyager. In case you haven't, and that is why you clicked on this video, Voyager 1 and 2 is an American scientific program that employs two robotic interstellar probes. Two of these were launched Voyager 1 and 2. They were established in 1977 to take advantage of a favorable alignment of Jupiter and Saturn. The Voyager 2 was launched on August 20, 1977, and the Voyager 1 was found just two weeks later, on September 5th. This probe has a height of 1.5 feet and is almost 6 feet wide. There is a round 12-foot wide antenna on the top of it. Now I know all you curious cats might wonder why Voyager 2 is named 2 if it was launched before. For more confusion, well, no, Voyager 1 sent us pictures of the Earth and the Moon. Soon after its launch, it took over Voyager 2, hence it has the number 1 in its name. Before we start with the rest of the details, I want to let you in on a very remarkable fact about these probes. Did you know they have each Voyager carries a golden record with a message on it in the hope of finding civilization? Furthermore, there are 115 images of the solar system, number system, diagrams of human DNA, and portraits of people and landscapes from Earth. Additionally, there's a device with greetings in 55 languages and 90 minutes of Earth's music collected from every corner of the world. What was it launched for? Its primary purpose was to observe and transmit information to Earth about another gigantic planet in the outer solar system. Voyager 2 was designed to study Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. NASA aimed to explore the outer limits of the solar system, or, in other words, to learn the edge of the solar system. So before we get into where the Voyagers are, let us run you through a background of what these probes have accomplished. On March 5, 1979, Voyage 1 came close to Jupiter and prepared its equipment to observe the planet. The probe went with a dozen scientific equipment and a two-camera system with narrow, wide-angle lenses. Indeed, NASA must have spent a great deal of money on this brand new technology. Voyager 1 sent full-length photos of Jupiter with its wide-angle camera technology and close-ups for people at NASA to study the planet more carefully. Even more interesting, the probe also had a radio science system to find out the atmospheric composition, gravitational fields, and weight of the worlds it came across on its way. Isn't that incredible? This allowed us to find perhaps a planet that was the closest in weight, gravitational fields, and atmospheric composition to Earth. Additionally, ultraviolet and infrared radiation spectrometers could help measure temperatures invisible to the human eye. Furthermore, Voyager 1 was also the first to find volcanoes outside Earth. This might not be as cool now, but think of volcanoes being discovered in the 70s. It had seen a dozen of volcanoes that spew constant lava. They were on no other than Jupiter's satellite Io. This should also give you an idea of how hot Jupiter is. Then, it shifted its cameras, and we discovered the Great Red Spot. If you don't know, it is a giant storm that has not stopped since the beginning of time. All of this was only possible because of Voyager 1. Another fun fact about Jupiter's satellite Io was that it acted like an electrical generator for Jupiter. This was also the first time we detected the light outside Earth. This electrical current was 5 million amperes. That is crazy. It almost seems impossible even to imagine that. Now you might wonder where did Voyager 2 go? Don't worry, we have got you recovered. White Voyager 2 was approaching near Io. It discovered that there were six volcanoes on its surface that were still erupting. Then, just five months after Voyager 1 discovered all these mind-blowing details about Jupiter, Voyager 2 approached Jupiter 2. Voyager 2 found how Jupiter had rings around it. However, unlike Saturn's rings, Jupiter's rings consist primarily of dust. Voyager 2 then came near Europa. This moon, unlike Jupiter, was covered with a crust of ice and beneath it was a liquid ocean. Do you know what this means? That life could exist here. Moreover, Voyager also captured its cracks. The two Voyagers had come across and observed the gas giant several times. By November 9, 1980, Voyager 1 had traveled eight Earth sun distances away from home. It finally arrived at Saturn. Keep watching to find out what all it discovered. The pro had the opportunity to look at Titan, Saturn's largest satellite. It is, in fact, 50 times larger than the moon and also has an atmosphere. The pro also found liquid water here. Another sign of life found all because of these voyagers. It also discovered three new satellites of the gas giant Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. This is how we found that the planet's rings were in line because of these three moons. Voyager 1 also found out that Saturn's rings were covered in ice, unlike Jupiter's rings. Furthermore, Voyager 1 then started to move up in the lines of the planets and soon, a year later, Voyager 2 joined. 
Together, they made their way to Saturn's icy satellites, which led us to find out that a long time ago, these moons collided and knocked vast chunks of ice and rock out of each other, and eventually the Saturn rings were born. After this, Voyager 2 made its way to the next gas giant 17 Earth suns away from our planet. Pause this video and take a wild guess. For the first time in history, a human-made object had come across none other than Uranus. Did you guess it right? The probe found that Uranus was the coldest planet in the solar system, with a temperature of minus 350 degrees. Did you know that it is four times harder than the South Pole? To our surprise, Voyager 2 also discovered 11 new moons there. By August 25, 1989, Voyager 2 had already traveled 23 Earth-Sun distances and had arrived at Neptune. This was the first time we had received pictures of the blue planet. Can you imagine we were unaware of how Neptune looked until 1989? The probe detected the existence of six new moons and sent images of the planet's rings. Voyager 2 soon left Neptune and was headed in the direction of deep space. The thought of that gives me chills. What about you? A few months later, the last photo of the entire solar system was sent to Earth by Voyager 1. The Voyager's cameras were turned off to save power, and this was the start of Voyager 1's mission. On 2004, December 16th, the probe passed through the termination shock. This means it had passed the shock and was entering interstellar space. Soon Voyager 2 followed and passed the termination shock in 2007. Both the probes moved in different directions. They discovered that the solar wind bubble is not round. It is more like an egg. Voyager 1 officially made history in 2012 by being the first artificial object to enter interstellar space. Voyager 2 soon followed her sister and joined interstellar space in 2018. Before we end this video, let us answer your one final question and the reason why you clicked on this video. Where are Voyagers 1 and 2 now? You will be relieved and surprised to hear this, but the Voyagers are operational even after 4 to 4 years. According to reports, Voyager 1 has traveled 153 Earth's sun distances and is moving forward at 38,000 miles per hour. As for Voyager 2, it is reportedly traveling more than 11.6 billion miles from Earth and is beyond the heliopause where the sun's influence ends and the interstellar medium begins. It is expected that in about 300 hours, the Voyagers will reach the Uwe cloud. Scientists also say they have the possibility of getting the nearest stars in the next 40,000 years. Can you believe that these probes have the chance of entering star systems and eventually exploring new worlds and perhaps finding planets similar to the Earth? Finding civilization has been NASA's mission forever, and it seems like we are one step further because of the probes. All right, guys, this brings us to the end of this video. What did you think of this video? Do you believe the Voyagers could still be operating 40,000 years later to enter the star system? What if the probe loses its battery, or perhaps we will be able to find another life finally? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. While you are at it, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also, press the notification bell so you too can notify you every time we drop a new video. Which reminds me to ask you one last question. What other videos would you like to watch on our channel? Until then, see you soon and goodbye.